So the third part of chapter two is conjugation and resonance. All right. Now this is something probably you haven't heard before. Okay, and we will try to go in really detail of this this topic. All right. <clears throat> and this topic is also important because because we're going to be using this this especially resonance in pretty much all the chapters and onwards. Okay, so it's a very important concept. Right. And we'll kind of learn everything properly here. All right. <clears throat> so what is a conjugation? So conjugation basically is a pattern, okay, in your molecule. So if your molecule has a pattern like a double single double, alternate double single double, then that is a conjugation. That's a type of conjugation. Okay. Or you might have a double bond, single bond with a plus charge. Okay. Double bond, single bond with negative charge. Okay. Or negative charge basically is same as electron pair. So you can have double single electron pair. Okay, or positive single negative or positive single electron pair. So these two are pretty much the same and these two are pretty much the same. All right. So if you look in reality we only have four patterns, right? So this is your one, two, these two are the same and these two are the same. Okay. I'm just trying to categorize them differently so you should not be confused with the negative charge or electron pair. The way we handle them is exact same. All right. So we have one, two, three, and four. So four different patterns, let's say. All right. <clears throat> so and that is your conjugation. All right. So the step one is: Do we have a pattern like this in your structure? If the answer is yes, then we can write the resonance. Okay. I cannot do resonance until I have any of these patterns in my molecule in my structure. Okay. So nothing like this, I cannot go for resonance. All right. So before we actually go into resonance, okay, we need to understand a couple of things here. That resonance means moving from one place to other place continuously. All right. So let's say you have the pendulum, the clock pendulum is going from left to right, okay, okay, and that's called the resonance. All right. <clears throat> so in this case, what we are trying to do is we are trying to move electrons from one place to other place, okay, in a molecule, okay, from left to right, right to left, okay, the same way, and that is your resonance, all right? So before we actually write resonance structures, okay, we need to <clears throat> understand a few things here, that we are moving electrons, okay, when I say we are doing resonance, basically we are moving electrons across the molecules, right? So resonance is... moving electrons across the molecule. All right. Now, how do you move electrons? There's a proper way we, we have to move electrons. So there's a proper uh, fashion we have to follow here, right? So when we move electrons, we use a curved arrow, okay? So curved arrow, that means electrons are moving from one place to other place. Two electrons can be electron pair, okay? It can be a negative charge, right? Or it can be a negative charge, okay? We can move a negative charge with an arrow, okay? Or we could have a double bond. So we have a carbon, carbon double bond, let's say we can move double bond from one place to other place. So they all mean two electron, right? So two electrons, a negative charge also means you have two electrons, and a double bond also means that you have two electrons, okay, to move, yeah. So make sure that you use a curved arrow when you move electron from one place to other place, all right? <clears throat> so what we'll do now is we will actually go after each and every conjugation, okay, and we'll see how can we write the resonance using, let's say, when you have double single positive, double single negative, or double single double. All right, so let's say we have a conjugation, right? So we have a pattern here, which is double single plus, okay? <clears throat> now, this is the easier one to handle. That's why we start with this, all right? Now, what are the electrons? Okay, so let's always try to find where the electrons are. So electrons are in the double bond. So double bond means two electrons, okay? So that's the same as electron pair. Your plus charge means no electrons. So we cannot move plus charge, okay, with an arrow. We can only move the double bond. So in this case, what we do is, let's say we have a double bond right here, okay, 
and we had to take the electrons to the other side of the molecule, right? So we flip this double bond between these two carbons right here. Okay, so let's say if you have a carbon one, two, and three, right? So these are three carbons right there, one, two, and three. Then we take the double bond and move it between two and three. So how do I show with an arrow? I take that electron pair and move it between two and three. So when I'm placing between two and three, I show that arrow going the, in the middle of the bond. Right? And when you write the two resonance structures, we show a double-headed arrow like this. Right? All right, so you have carbon one, two, and three. So one, two, and three. So if I move that double bond between two and three, how it will look like? It will look like this. All right. Now, carbon three is gaining electrons. Right? So the charge will not be there. But we are taking electrons away. Right? So this electron pair is between one and two. And now what we're doing is we're taking electrons away from carbon one. So carbon one should get the plus charge. All right. So we don't move the positive charge with an arrow, but we assume that if you're taking electrons away from somebody, then that should have a plus charge, right? So that carbon number one should get the plus charge, right? Now we are here. Right? Now, if you look, if you wanna go back, then I have electron pair between two and three, so I can just go back and bring, bring the electron pair back between one and two. Right? So you just have to play with it. Okay, either you go this way or you go this way, right? So if I go this way, then you have a carbon one and two and three. So it's your carbon one, two and three. So if I move the electron pair like this, then carbon three will have the plus charge, all right? So this is where we started, plus charge on three, and now the plus charge on three back. So that means you stop, all right? So we went to the other side, to one and then we came back to three all right so that's how we write resonance structure so we start from one point and then we go back to the actual starting point all right so we have in this case two resonance structures all right <clears throat> so when you write a resonance structure there's one more thing that we we can write okay and we can actually show a general structure here such as one two and three okay so we are moving electrons from one to three, so we can write down a dotted line, okay, that we are moving electrons between these three, among these three carbons, one, two, and three, and which carbon has a positive charge, so carbon three has a partial, and so we show it as a partial positive charge, right, so positive charge is on three at some time, and 50% of the time, the positive charge is on carbon one, and this is called as a resonance hybrid. So it just shows you the overall picture of how, where we are moving the electrons, which carbons, between which, which, which carbons, and which carbons are having the charges, okay? And that's called as a resonance hybrid. Okay? Again, when you have a double single positive conjugation, okay? Again, you can only write resonance when you have a conjugation. So if you have a conjugation like this, then this is the way you handle it, okay? And there's only one way you can do it is like this. Okay, moving the double bond between two and three, so double one will go between two and three and carbon one will get the plus charge. And then you have to get back to what you started with. So if I wanna go back to what I started with, then I have to flip this double bond back between one and two, okay? So that is the one type of conjugation, all right? So let's say what's gonna happen if you have a second type, okay? So we are still doing the easier ones first and then we'll jump on the, <clears throat> the complicated ones. So let's say if you have a conjugation like this, So how can we write resonance structures? With? So we have a double single electron pair. Right, so double single electron pair. Now, <clears throat> when we write resonance, we are moving electrons from one place to other place, okay, or across the molecule. So in this case, we have electrons in electron pair right here, and we also have electron in the double bond. So how do you handle it? So we have three carbons here, carbon one, two, and three. So carbon three, write down the electron pair at the back side here. So we have electron pair on carbon three and double bond between carbon one and two, okay? So in this case, 
we start with the electron pair or the negative charge, whichever you have. Okay, so we start with the electron pair and we place it between two and three. Okay, so we'll place that electron pair between two and three. So electron pair will go in between two and three, and at the same time, we move the electron pair from the double bond to carbon one. Okay, so we have two arrows here. Okay, electron pair going between two and three, and that is going on one. So how the structure will look like then? Okay, so we have carbon one, two, and three. So if I move this electron pair between two and three, that electron pair will change into a double bond. Okay, because they mean the same thing. Remember, a double bond, electron pair, and negative charge, they all mean the same thing, two electrons. And then what I can do is, if I'm moving these two electrons on this carbon, then that will become an electron pair. Okay, that means double bond also means the two electrons, right? That will become your electron pair. Okay. Now we are on carbon one, right? So we reach to the end of the molecule, and then we can go back. So you can go back exact same way. I can place that between one and two, and that will go on three. So we do exact same thing, but other way around now. So carbon three will have the electron pair, and double bond will be go between. One, two, and three. All right. <clears throat> so we we got what we started with, then we stop. All right. So, and the same thing when you have a negative charge. Right. So if I have a negative charge, then you can do the exact same thing. That's why I was saying the negative charge and electron pair basically are the same. So you. <laughs> that will become negative. In this case, we are ta talking about negative charge, so it's negative, it's electron pair means you have to look at the electron pair. Then that will come back and give you the structure, what you started with. So that will become double bond and this will become negative charge. So exact same way, okay? Instead of electron pair, now we have a negative charge, all right? So in this case, we can write down a resonance hybrid like this, that we have three carbons, carbon one, two, and three, and the electrons are moving between these three carbons, right? So carbon one, two, and three. And which carbons have the charges now? So the negative charge is on carbon three, okay? And carbon one, right? So carbon three and carbon one has partially negative and partially negative. Sometimes this is negative and sometimes this is negative, right? So that's your resonance hybrid for this, all right? Again, <clears throat> just to summarize this part right here, when you have the electron pair or a negative charge, you start with it. That's your starting point, okay? So electron pair will go between carbon two and three, and then the double bond will move at the same time. Okay, so you create a new double bond here, and that will become an electron pair on the carbon one. Okay, so that electron pair will go and sit on carbon one. Okay, and on the other way around, we do the exact same thing. Okay, we go back to create our double bond where we want it between one and two and three will have the electron pair, all right? So you have to get back where you started with, okay? So I started with electron pair on three, and I got that electron pair on three. That means you stop. All right, so when you have a double, single, double type of conjugation, then <clears throat> there's a different way to handle this, all right? And this is the only complicated conjugation to handle out of all the one, other ones, right? So in this case, we treat a double bond like a negative charge or an electron pair, right? So what happens here, we start with pushing these two electrons between two and three, and at the same time, pushing this electron pair or the pi bond on carbon one, right? So how it will look like in the next structure? Yeah. Uh, make sure you keep track of your carbon one, two, and three, so, sorry, one, two, three, and four. Let's see, one, two, three, and four. Right. So we are flipping this double bond between two and three. So two and three will get a double bond, all right? And this electron pair is going on one, so that will become negative, all right? Now, if you look at carbon four, then in this process, we are actually taking electrons away from carbon four. So when you take electrons away, that should get the plus charge. Okay. So this conjugation happens in four carbons, 
Okay, until now, whatever we saw, they were between only, they were among three carbons, but this is among four carbons, all right? Now, we start here, let's say we started carbon four, we end at carbon one, right? So we don't have any more room to go further. So we have to go back now, okay? So remember the, the key here is we have to get back to what we started with, right? So if I wanna go back to this structure, then I'm looking backwards now. So if I wanna go backwards, then what I have, I have negative single double. Okay? So that's a conjugation, right? So we work on that conjugation, right? So that's how you handle when you have negative single double, right? So, double become negative, right? So carbon one and two will have the double bond now, and three will become negative, so that's your carbon three. And four is right there, which is positive, right? So we worked on one type of conjugation, which is negative single double, okay? And then we stop at three here. Now we look forward, so on the four, if you look forward, then we have negative single positive, and that is also a conjugation, and how you handle it? It's like this. So when you write your next structure, it will be like this. So now three and four will have a double bond. So you got what you started with. Okay, and that's the time you stop. All right. So <clears throat> when you have a double single double, you start with a double bond and start pushing on one side. Okay. And on the way backward, you don't have a double single double. Instead we have a negative single double. So every conjugation has a proper way to handle it, okay? So when you have a negative single double, that's between one, two, and three. So that's how you work, okay? Once you're done with that, then you look forward, okay? And that's, how, that's, that's the way you handle resonance. So the last two types of conjugations, when you have a positive single negative or positive single electron pair, and the way you handle it, the negative charge actually just goes and sits between those two charges, right? So for this, you have, let's say this is your carbon one and carbon two right here. So that's your carbon one and carbon two. So you create a double bond, okay? And same thing is here. So this is your carbon one and two. The electron pair will go and sit between the two carbons. So, all right, so negative charge, electron pair are pretty much the same thing, all right? So, so you create a double bond, right? Now, if you want to go backwards, like where I started, then you push that electron pair back on that carbon. All right, so that's your carbon one and two. So if I take the electrons, electron pair on two, then your carbon two will have the negative charge and carbon one become positive because we are taking electrons away from carbon one. And same thing for this. So that's your one and two. So this will get the electron pair and this will get the positive charge. Since we are moving the electron pair, we can we can show as an electron pair. All right. So this is this easier one to handle. Okay, in this case we only use one arrow. Okay. Now the the question is we have all these different types of conjugations and we have seen them, how can we handle them separately? Right? So when we have a double single double, when you have a double single negative, double single positive. Okay, we know how to handle them separately. All right, now <clears throat> we'll look now is how can we combine them in one structure and how can we work it out? All right, so let's say if you have an example. Okay, so here now we're, we're out here looking at a combination of two or more conjugations. Okay, not just one. All right? So let's say here your example we have a double, single double with a negative charge, all right? So we have double, single, double, and negative, all right? So what kind of conjugations we have, first of all, right? So you have double, single, double, and double, single, negative, okay? So when you have <clears throat> two different conjugations, okay? So the, it's not a real rule, but it's just to make life a little easier. If you have a negative charge or electron pair, you start with it, okay? So start with electron pair or negative charge, okay? So in this case, if I wanna start with negative charge, then what I have, I have negative single double, okay? And how do we handle negative single double? Okay, 
negative charge will go between let's say this is your one two and three and this will go on the third carbon all right so that's how we handle it so the first structure will look like this so there will be a double bond between these two carbons and this carbon right here will get the negative <clears throat> all right now we stop here okay we're done with this first conjugation we stopped here now if you look further then we have negative single double so that means we're going to keep going on so we can keep going on for the next conjugation all right so that will get you all right so this double bond is already there we did not touch it okay you'll create a new double bond between these two carbons and this carbon right here will get the negative charge all right because the electron pair is going on that carbon all right so now we cannot go any further because there's no molecule or there's no further conjugation okay and we haven't got back to what we started with so that means we have to go backwards now so on the way back what we have we have negative single double so then you can start with negative charge and go for go further right so so after completing this conjugation you will get this structure so you have negative single double further now so I can go keep going further and that will get you right so if I'm working out here then I have negative single double so negative charge will become a double bond and this electron pair will go on this carbon right here to become negative okay so we started with the negative charge on this carbon and we got the negative charge back to that carbon okay so this is the key here what you started with you should get it back at the end okay and it's also a confirmation so if you make a mistake on the way then you will never get to this structure okay so you can go back and fix it so you know where, where you made the mistake and you can go back and fix it so <clears throat> resonance is not only true for carbon atoms okay? you can have something which is not really a carbon atom such as this All right so if you have a nitrogen and oxygen you still have a conjugation so what we're looking at here is nitrogen should have electron pair okay and oxygen should have two electron pairs right because oxygen has two two bonds and nitrogen has three bonds so they should have one electron pair on nitrogen and two on the oxygen so what kind of conjugation we have here okay so we have double single electron pair all right so that's the conjugation all right and, and if you have a negative charge or electron pair then we start with it so that will go between these two carbons so exact same way the way we handle it okay before in the only difference here is now we have a nitrogen and oxygen but that should not be a problem right. so oxygen will become negative here because the electron pair is going on the oxygen and there should be a double bond between nitrogen and a carbon right so the electron pair will go and form a double bond and this will go and become negative don't forget you still have two electron pairs on the oxygen okay now the only <clears throat> Thing you have to be careful when you have a nitrogen and oxygen is the formal charges right so nitrogen has three bonds here with electron pair okay normally oxygen should have two bonds nitrogen should have three bonds right with an electron pair right but if you put a fourth bond and the nitrogen if I put a fourth bond, if I take that electron pair and convert it into a bond, then nitrogen should get a plus charge of, sorry, a formal charge of plus one. And if you have oxygen, and if that has three bonds instead of two, if you add one extra bond on oxygen, then that also should have a formal charge of plus one. All right. So let's apply the rule here now. So how many bonds you have a nitrogen? We have four bonds, one, two, three, and four. So we have one, two, and three, and four. That means nitrogen should have the plus charge. All right. Now we started with electron pair, single bond, double bond. We got here. We did not get the structure back. So that means we have to go backwards now okay, and get 
to the actual structure what we started with. Right? So we have on the way back now, we have negative single double. Right? So we can start negative single double and that will go on. Not here. So in this case, we will create a double bond between carbon and oxygen. Okay? And nitrogen will get its electron pair back okay? in the form of double bond. And the electron pairs on the oxygen will stay the way they are. All right. So again, the rules are still the same. If you have an nitrogen and oxygen, you have to pay extra attention now because you can have the formal charges on nitrogen and oxygen. So let's say if you have a structure like this. Okay. So the first thing always is to try to identify what kind of conjugations we have. Right. So in this case, we have electron pair, single bond, double bond, and double, single, double. Okay. And as I said, if you have electron pair or a negative charge, you start with it. So this will be your starting point. Right? So electron pair will become double bond, and at the same time, double bond will become negative. Right? So, so if you work on the first type of conjugation, then this carbon here will become negative, or you can put electron pair. Either way is fine. <clears throat> and there will be a double bond between carbon and oxygen. Right? Now oxygen has three bonds. Right? So one, two, and three. One extra bond should get a plus charge. All right. So we work on this conjugation okay, right here and we stop here. Right? Now we look further. If we look further, do we have a conjugation? Yes, we have electron pair single bond, double bond, right? So or negative single double. So then you can keep going on. <clears throat> so in this case, this carbon here will become negative. So I start working on this, then this carbon will become negative, right? So we started from here, we went all the way across the molecule, right? So that's where we are now. Now we have to go backwards. So on the way back, we have a negative single double. So we can start working on it. So that will get you. Negative charge on this carbon right here after working out this conjugation, right? And once you reach here, then you look further. So on the way back, we have negative single double. So we can start working on that conjugation. And that will get you the electron pair back on the oxygen. Now oxygen has only two bonds, so there should not be any charge on it. The charge will get neutralized Right. after you give the electron pair back to the oxygen. All right. So you got what you started with. Okay. So that's one, one good thing about writing resonance structures this way, that you start and then you go across the molecule and then you come back to what you started with. So if you make a mistake on the way, then you will never get back to the actual structure what you started with. Okay. And that's why you, can, you get a chance to go back and fix it. All right. Now let's see another type of a situation where you actually have an aromatic ring, all right? So aromatic ring have a, has a conjugation. You have a double, single, double, double, single, double, double, single, double. And then we also have other conjugation here, which is negative single double, all right? As I said, if you have a negative charge, you start with it, all right? So if you're starting with a negative charge, then what we have, we have negative single double right here, okay? So we are working out with this conjugation, not this way, only this way because you have negative single double going this side okay and how do we handle that electron pair will go between one and two and that will go on three right? so that's how you handle when you have negative single double right so this carbon right here will become negative and then you'll create a double bond between these two carbons right so there are two carbons right there so you create a double bond and this carbon becomes negative don't forget that you still have two other double bonds in the ring. Right. Now we started from here, we stopped here. Then you look further. So on the way forward, what we have, we have negative single double. So we can start working on it. So this carbon right here will get the negative charge. So there's a carbon right there. All right. and the other double bond is still the way it is. All right. Now we we are here. If we go forward now, then there will be negative single double again. So 
So this will become negative here. So that carbon right there will become negative and there will be a double bond here. All right. And if you look forward, then you have negative single, double. So you can start working out that. So this carbon right here will get the negative charge and then you'll have the double bond syndrome. All right, so <clears throat> when you have an aromatic ring, okay, what's the difference between this example and the examples we did before? Is when you have the aromatic ring, then you start from one end, right? And we just keep going on in the loop, right? So we just keeping keep going on the loop and then we get back to the actual structure, right? So in this case, we don't go back and forth, right? So remember the previous example, we start from one point, we go all the way to the end, and then we come back. But in this case, we just keep going on in the loop, okay? And if it's not obvious to you, then just follow the resonance, right? So follow the conjugation. So you have negative single double, right? Then you have negative single double. You have negative single double. And when we look here, then further conjugation is negative single double, right? So it will self-guide you which way to go, okay? But in this case, you just have to keep going on in one direction until you get back to the actual structure. So if you have double single positive and double single double, okay? Now in this case, <clears throat> we don't have a negative charge, right? So there's no starting point, but what I would recommend, you start from this carbon right here so you know where to stop, all right? So if I start from here, then I have positive single double. And how do you handle it? The electron pair will go between the two carbons right there. And it will create a double bond here. Right? So electron pair will go and create a double bond. But we are taking electrons away from this carbon, right? So we are moving double bond like this. So this will get the plus charge. Okay. Remember, when we start with the positive charge, we are moving the positive charge across the molecule. Right? Then you have your... So on the wave... If you, look, you stop here, if you look further, then we have a positive single double. So how do we handle positive single double then? Again, we flip the double bond between these two carbons right there. So, so double bond will go here, and we are taking electrons away from this carbon now, right? So let's flip it this way, so that becomes positive. Don't forget, we still have a double bond left here, right? So if I go this way then, right? So we just have to keep going on one direction because we have an aromatic ring. So, so you'll get a double bond here now, right? So if this will go here and form a double bond and this carbon will get the plus charge, right? Now we are here and if you look further because we are just going in one direction now. So if I look further and then I have a positive single double, okay? Then you work it off and you will get the structure what you started with. All right, so positive charge goes back to the carbon what you started with. Now in this case, if you look at the aromatic ring, right, we started with a double bond on this carbon right here. Right. So if you compare the structure what we started with, and if you compare the structure what we got at the end, okay, you might say that these two structures are not the same because the position of your double bonds are not the same here, right? So there's no double bond here, but you have a double bond here, all right? But in reality, these two are the aromatic rings, okay? So when you have alternate double, single, double, double, single, double, alternate double, single, double, double, single, double, then they both are the aromatic ring. So these two are the same structures. Okay, so at the end, what you really care about is your charge. So the carbon that has a plus charge when you started should have the plus charge at the end. Okay, so if you put the charge back on its place, then you pretty much have the right structure.